Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. Here's what happens when a group of our favorite idiots try to teach physics to each other and they can't seem to agree on a point. This is funny. Yeah, I look, I'll respond to Anthony's. Uh, I'm going to get back to you on that, Nathan, because I think you have, uh, you have me mixed up in my understanding of this. So I'll get back in a moment, but I'll respond to what Anthony wants me to respond to first. Yeah, let me, let me ask this. So you said that if the gas was a less dense gas in the room, right? I'm going to use Flatzoid's recent video to demonstrate a less dense gas. It's not in a room, it's outside and it's in the open air in a vacuum, according to them. But you can see how there's um, a bulbous part to this very light balloon. It's not got structure like a hot air balloon. It's more like a floppy condom filled with this stuff. And you can see it's very bulbous. I don't know if you've ever seen these ones before. But my, my direct question is, Brian, if I flipped the fish tank upside down so that the opening was now at the bottom and it was above and I filled it with helium and then I turned the boat upside down as well. And I, 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 do you do you accept that the pressure from the atmosphere at 14.7 would be pushing against the helium and the balloon would be uh, the um, the tinfoil boat? Hang on. Oh, let me work how this would work. No, no, you've got it, you there, you there. You're saying, would it do the reverse effect if you had the helium trapped underneath a fish tank that's got a closed lid and an open bottom, and then you had the heli uh, the tinfoil thing in exactly the same position it is now, but with slightly extended sides to the drawing that you've done, and you've got helium above, would the helium, which is essentially trying to displace its way out of the container downwards, but is struggling and taking its sweet time, it's more, more the fact that the gas is, the 14.7 normal air pressure that's around it is working its way in between the helium forcing it out but over time in other words it's going to sink its way up that's what anthony's asking right anthony I, i've got it in the wrong place forget where the boat should, i've put the boat here i put the boat at the top and the weight of the, um, the helium is pressing against the boat do you agree that the boat would stay trapped between the, the, the top surface of the glass and it wouldn't fall down because it was being trapped in by the helium do you agree that's what would happen or not no, the, 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 it's not. It's always going to go with its tensor. There isn't enough density to the helium to keep the boat anywhere but from going down. It's just not going to happen. No matter what you do, that boat is going to go down through the helium. It doesn't do it through the sulfur hexafluoride because the sulfur hexafluoride is dense enough. That's the only like, reason it happens with sulfur hexafluoride. That's the only reason CO2 in concentration will sit at the base of a floor or when it comes out of the ground it's actually sitting there it's sitting there when it's in concentration because it's so dense in concentration it's concentration or it's it's makeup is so, it's so much more dense than the air uh, that that is actually uh, separates it actually pushes it displaces the air wrong. when it wrong, comes out of the wrong. ground while you can have it a is displaced in the air on, when it comes out wrong. of the ground but it's wrong no, it's not. <laughs> okay, I'll go back to my example of CO2 coming out of the ground in, co in concentration. It displaces the air that's surrounds it until it integrates into the air. Now, I never got to finish, get to my last part. This kept on happening the other day as well. I ended up having to answer two or three questions from different angles, right? What's happening to the CO2, it comes out of the ground, and due to its density, right, it's not, um, it's, not, uh, it's not succumbing to entropy, right, the description of entropy, it's not succumbing, succumbing to that immediately, because it's in a concentration and it's pretty dense. Yeah, it More is, dense that's wrong. Hang on, hang on, hang on, leave me finish. <laughs> Hang on. Now, for a start, I never said anything about entropy not happening. I've never said that. Yeah, you did. Secondly, no, well, I never said those words. Anyone can go back on this stream and they won't hear me say that. Yeah, they will. Now, secondly, well, you're welcome to go back and challenge me on it later. He's trying Brian, to say you were Brian, you did say that. Brian, you did I, say that. You said that entropy wouldn't take yet. place immediately. <laughs> Okay, okay, let's just try this. Define concentration. Concentra uh, a concentration of sand will be just a load of sand together. You know, in concentration. 
a grouping, a grouping maybe the a, a, gathering, a, a gathering, a gathering of stuff, a a gathering yeah. of stuff or people. Would you agree with that? Hold on, well, whatever, get it somewhere. Just a, 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 I, I, I don't know what a word to use. Uh, I, I don't even know why I have to define concentration. Because you're using it. A... <laughs> well, okay, because it's a, it's a, it's a, a concentration of, of carbon monoxide is uh, is uh, an area where there is no, no. majority stop, 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 stop. of a, let's say, a, a, a square meter, a, a square meter where there is uh, where the majority of it is filled by carbon monoxide that is a concentration of carbon monoxide look, just look it up then have a look at what it says for concentration well that's not anything to do with the molecular level let's call it weight for ease of description don't anybody criticize me for that it's not part of the argument but when you describe the molecular weight that's irrelevant because i can say well if i do this with helium yeah it's still going to disperse throughout the gas if it's at a higher pressure to force its way into the existing gas yeah but once the, once the pressure has equalized which it does once that gas gets into the once the carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide gets into the room then that releases that bit of pressure the point is is that why is the carbon monoxide for a time until it integrates and why is the carbon dioxide for a time until it integrates why did the two of them take two different positions in the room because you forced it into it by way of a higher pressure. Matter. It doesn't matter. That doesn't answer why the carbon monoxide will sit at the ceiling and the carbon dioxide will sit at the floor. It doesn't. It pressure won't sit at... Hold it. on. That's a misconception that you think that they'll sit in layers. If you force them into containment, yeah, you can distribute them by way of having pressure introducing them into the differential. The original machine had a base plate of pre-famulated amulite surmounted by a malleable logarithmic casing in such a way that the two spurving bearings were in a direct line with a panometric fam. I don't know about that density tower. Bob, no, Good morning, guys. that to the side. You say that again, Neil. You don't know about the density tower? Or, or don't, or don't. <laughs> Bob Nodell tossed that to the I... side like it didn't even matter. Can... Can Hold I go back minute. to the temperature issue? Oh, oh, John, John you can. Yes. Yes, go ahead, Brian. John was going to say something about the current thing, so I'll go back to the temperature issue after that. I, I think this whole conversation is a bit convoluted because we're trying to mix uh, how, why questions with what is questions and then asserting things that we don't really know. Now, what we can say is that we're witnessing a proportionality. There is already a law in effect that describes that proportionality. What are we doing? Well, what if well, science, science. What, what, what if mainstream science has deliberately used any name possible other than the word density to describe the mass or the matter or the volume or the mole or the energy or whatever, whatever these words are, if there's a buzzword that they can't use because they don't want to tell us that it's density, right? They'll use anything to describe it but density, right? And is it possible that they are using any other word possible with very loose definitions so that they don't really help us in any way and you end up being more confused than you are? But rather than admit that it's density related, no, if they just not, use density, that's not what there wouldn't be any confusion. No, what they do is they originally ascribed a downward vector, always in effect, called gravity. Then they replaced that because you couldn't actually demonstrate it in reality. It was debunked by gas with a bending geodesic in space-time, a medium that didn't exist and was invented in mathematics to get around this need for a force with a downward vector, when in reality, when you get down to the nitty-gritty of what you're actually investigating, you're trying to figure out what the cause of entropy is. Correct. Well, I, what I would say to John's statement there is, no, uh, a, a greater... A greater density, a greater concentration of matter, a, a concentration, sorry, a concentration of matter of greater density will support a concentration of matter of lesser density. I mean, it's too, it, it couldn't be more simple. I don't see why there is, it's like, why there is even a problem with this. It's like, you know, it's, sand will be supported by rock, but it won't be supported by air. You know, that's not strictly true. Oh, hold, on, correct. hold on, Brian. That's not true. That's actually not true. Let me just correct Brian. 
So, Brian, I'm agreeing oh. with your structural support. I'm starting to really agree with Brian here. Hold on a minute. I mean, Before we go forward, I, I, when you point out more dense to less dense, you are still asserting a proportionality. We already have a natural law in place that is describing a proportionality. It's called entropy. Correct. Yeah, but entropy is a description. That's yes, that's correct is. also. So entropy, just like, I mean. What more do you think you're going to get? This is well, kind of where we and Rob got to last night. It's, I think it's a foolhardy mission to think at the moment that you're going to get any more than a description of what always happens. Kids, stay in school. Hey, thanks for watching. See you guys on the next one.